Hello students, welcome back. Uh, I welcome you all to plant morphology and anatomy classes. Today we will discuss root and its morphology and modification. I have divided the lecture into two parts. The first part will be on root morphology. Okay, so before we start, uh, let me tell you, we all know that uh, the plant axis is divided into parts, right? Into the root system and the shoot system. Like, uh, see, if you just take a look over here, if, if suppose this is the axis and this is the substratum, this is your soil, right? The part below, this is your root system and this one is your shoot system. So, broadly, if you are dividing a plant axis, you can divide it into two parts, right? The root and the shoot system, okay? Now, Let's talk a little about the various characteristics of root. Now see, the root is negatively phototropic, positively hydrotropic. Please note, negatively phototropic, positively hydrotropic and positively geotropic. Right? This is the descending portion of the plant axis. Now, to explain this, see, if I say it is negatively phototropic, that means what? It grows away from sunlight, right? Suppose this is the sun. The root is growing below the soil, see? This is away from sunlight. So, it is negatively phototropic. Positively hydrotropic means what? Roots are always in search of water, okay? Therefore, they are positively hydrotropic and positively geotropic. See, it is growing in the direction of gravity. Therefore, it is positively, it is positively geotropic. Okay. It is usually non-green or brown in color and is not further differentiated into nodes and internodes. For the shoot, see, you have nodes and internodes but for roots you will not find nodes and internodes right it develops from the radical of the embryo and does not bear leaves and the tree buds fine usually a root cap protects the root tip we will talk about uh, these features in details right the root bears unicellular hairs which is which are known as root hairs you know lateral roots arise from the roots fine May, from the main root these are endogenous in origin that is arises from the pericycle now let's talk about the regions of a root or the parts of a root now let's quickly draw it's a very Easy diagram, I would urge my students to learn this diagram well. This is a very easy one. Okay, this is not at all a difficult diagram. See, this part, well, let's start from here. This is the root cap region. This part is the root cap region. Okay, it is also known as Calyptra. What is it also known as? Calyptra. Okay. The, it is a tender, thimble-shaped, cap-like structure that secretes mucilage to lubricate the passage of root through the soil. So, this part secretes a mucilaginous substance that helps the root to move gently into the soil, move into the soil without any hassle. Okay, it protects the root medicine from mechanical injury. 
these uh, the cells that make up this root cap right this uh, the cells have starch grains in it that aid in perception of gravity or gravity perception what is it it helps this is very important helps in perception of gravity what is this known as this is known as gravity perception this is known as gravity perception okay so this is your root cap region what is this root cap region little up we have the meristematic zone or meristematic region meristematic region fine this region okay this region is a subterminal region that measures about 1 to 1.5 mm in length this one it is 1 to 1.5 mm all right this region is a region of active cell division okay it helps in longitudinal growth of the plant and is made up of thin walled meristematic cells now one thing let me mention in root cap region uh, this root cap region is also absent in is uh, in in some of very special plants what are they they are hydrophytes root cap is absent in hydrophyte instead root pockets are present in many aquatic or hydrophytes in aquatic plants so hydrophytes they are elongated loose cap that function as balancers and not replaced when injured okay now so this is your uh, root cap region this is your meristematic region then we'll move on to the zone of elongation this is your zone of elongation okay this region lies above the meristematic region and helps in root elongation okay so this is your elongation zone also you can say fine the cells in this region have lost the power of division okay the cells over here do not divide but they help in elongation of the root next we'll come to the region of maturation okay now over here you will have plenty of structures like this can you tell what are these these are these are root hairs okay these are root hairs fine the root hairs are elongated single celled tubular structures fine now these structures these structures are absolutely dedicated for what for absorption of water okay lateral tubular outgrowths these lateral tubular outgrowths are very important for absorption of water from the soil remember these are non permanent structures that increase the surface area of absorption okay root hairs are absent in hydrophytes this region now this region see this part this region is your maturation 
zone. In maturation zone over here, what happens? See, this is the zone of differentiation where enlarged cells differentiate to form tissues like cortex, xylem, phloem, etc. Okay. Most of water absorption will occur over here. We were just now talking. Fine. Most of water absorption will occur in this region. Fine. It forms the bulk of root. This region helps in anchoring the plants firmly with the soil. Lateral roots also arise from this region. Okay. So, this is the basic structure of a root. Fine. Now, if we just write in one or two words, just to recapitulate what we have just studied. See, in, the, in this region, what will we write? In the root cap region, it is a cap-like structure that lubricates, just will write, lubricates the passage of root through soil and also protection that is also there. Okay. Next in the metastomatic region, what do we write over here? We will write about active cell division. Elongation increase the length of the root. Fine. Then we'll come to zone of maturation. Mainly absorption of water. See, these are just one or two very important functions that I'm writing over here. Please listen to the explanation very carefully and try to Note them down in your notebooks. Okay. Now we will come to the functions. Functions can be broadly divided into two parts. First is the primary function. Second is the secondary function. Primary function is what? Anchorage. You know roots fix the plant with the substratum. Okay. This is the most important function of Next is absorption. It absorbs water and minerals from the rhizosphere. From where does it absorb? From rhizosphere. Okay. Next is conduction. Conduction means what? It will absorb and it will send it to other parts as well. Okay, so the next is conduction. What are the secondary functions? Secondary function is root modification. Roots are modified to deliver various types of functions like storage, support, some other vital functions. Okay, so we'll talk about this section in the next lecture. Okay, roots in parasitic plants derive nutrition from the host, then aerial roots absorb moisture, vegetative reproduction. Each of these will be discussed in part 2 of my lecture. Okay. Now we will come to the classification of root system. Root system is broadly classified into two parts. Generally uh, you have heard one is tap root system. The other is adventitious root system. Okay. These are two most important Division, subdivisions of root.
So one is tap root, the other is adventitious root. See, here I have written three types, tap root, fibrous root and adventitious root. You, you will find in many books that these two are clubbed together. They are basically, you know, you will not find huge differences, but just to know it, let's study C. Tap root or true root is the primary root formed from the radical. It persists. Okay, there will be a comma. It persists. Okay. Here in fibrous root, the primary root is short-lived. Adventitious root, see, it develops from plant parts other than the radical. So from other positions, from other parts like the stem, the leaves. Okay. So let's quickly have a look at the basic differences between the taproot system and the adventitious root system. Okay, taproot or the primary root which persists throughout the life of plant. Please note, throughout the life of plant. Here, see the side it's taproot and the side it is adventitious root. Fine. Root that develops from any part of the plant other than or except the radical or its derivatives. Okay, it occurs in dicots. This is very, very important. Fine, this occurs in dicots and this is mostly in monocots. It develops from the radical. Okay, it develops from other organs. It persists. It is short-lived. It grows deep into the soil. It is a bit superficial. It does not grow deep into the soil. Main root of the plant from which the lateral branches including secondary roots and tertiary roots develop. Fine. Over here see. A number of roots develop at a single point. Fine. In tap root C. This is a substratum. You will see the main root like this. Then you will see the secondary roots. Many secondary roots will come out. Then you will see tertiary roots coming out from the secondary roots like this. No? But in adventitious root, what do you see? You have clusters of roots like this. You don't have any main root. And they develop from a single point this one fine so before we end before we end let's so let's just quickly quickly talk a little about this uh, tap root and adventitious root system in a minute we will just recall what we have done so it is uh, taproot is what? It develops from the radical of an embryo during seed germination. It is mainly characterized by the dicot plants. It develops its main root from where the secondary and tertiary roots come. And one very important thing is all the lateral branches are produced in acropetal succession. That means what? Older branches near the base and younger ones near the apex of the main root. So this is your taproot system and your adventitious root system is what? It develops from parts other than radical and its derivatives. It develops from one single point and it is superficial in nature. It doesn't travel too deep. Okay? And it is mainly found in monocots. So this is how we complete the morphology of roots. In the next lecture, in the second part of my lecture, we will discuss the various modifications of root. Right? I hope you have enjoyed learning this. If you find this useful, please do share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get regular updates on whatever lecture I bring for you. Thank you.